Thanks, Leonard. Okay. Okay, I uh, apologize to those who are listening. I'm going to listen to this recording. Um, I didn't, I did not start the recording when the class started. So we've lost about 30 minutes, the first 30 minutes of class. I uh, apologize for that. So basically, we are in lesson number six, and this will quickly cap. Uh, we are in lesson number six. We're talking about the steps of the big day program. And uh, this, we're going we're going to Romans chapter four, verses seventeen to twenty-one. Uh, we're just breaking down the steps of the faith. Labor. And uh, yeah, I apologize that I didn't start the recording. Um, but just a quick recap: the first point we said was Abraham believed God. So that's the first thing that we do. So when God speaks His word to us, our responsibility is to believe. Second, we saw in, 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 the, in the example of Abraham, it's against all hope, in hope he believed. So, when there was no reason for hope, he still kept hope alive, stayed hopeful, and then he believed God. So we talked a little bit about how to keep hope alive from Genesis 15 by painting pictures in our family of the fulfillment of the promise of God. Uh, so as we keep that picture alive uh, in our minds, we can keep the promise, uh, keep hope alive. Then the third point, which we were talking about, was um, he did not weaken in faith. I'm sorry. Um, just tell the report. Thanks. So a lot of people are reminding me just about the report. All right. So the third thing we saw was, or that we were looking at, was. And Abraham, he did not weak, he did not weaken in faith, he did not, he was not weak, weakened in his faith by looking at the circumstance. So that's what we'll pick up now. Let me just share the class notes. Uh, so he was not weak in faith, he didn't look at the circumstances. So that's something we need to do this. Is of focusing on the circumstances, focus on the promise of God. Because the circumstances, looking at it all the time, is just going to weaken our faith. But instead, look at the promise of God, keep our eyes focused on the promise of God that will strengthen our faith. Number four is he did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. So, unbelief will come knocking, thoughts of doubt, and fear, all those negative thoughts will come. But we choose not to pay at the promise of God. We keep our eyes focused on the promise of God so that we can continue in faith. All right, so number five. We're all, all together? Right, good. Okay. Number five. What else do we see in the steps of Abraham's faith? Number five is he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to. God. Romans 4, verse 22. He was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. So what is giving glory to God? It's giving praise to God. Okay? So glory to God. We're giving praise to God. You're glorifying Him. You're praising Him. You're thanking Him. So what the scripture is telling us is, as Abraham was making his journey of faith, even before he received the promise, he was giving glory to God. That means he was praising God before Isaac was actually born, before the promise actually came. He was glorifying God, praising God, magnifying God. And that strengthened his faith. Okay, so this is what we can do. Suppose you are believing God or something, you know, whether it's a written scripture or something God has spoken to you in your life, you're believing God for it. And it hasn't yet happened. It hasn't yet come to pass. But what you and I can do is 
We can give glory to God. We can praise God. We can thank Him. We can glorify Him and say, God, I thank you for that. Even before it happens. Fine. We can do it by faith. We can do it by faith. So as a father, thank you for this beautiful promise that for this beautiful thing you're going to do, Lord. Thank you for this thing. Thank you for, you know, for the fulfillment of the promise. Even before it is done, you're giving glory to God. You're thanking God for it. You're praising God. He so, said, Father, I thank that you're more than able, you're more than powerful uh, to make it happen, to cause it to come. So you're giving glory to God. You're giving praise to God. Even before it happens. And what, what is the result of doing something like that? It strengthens our faith. It makes us stronger in faith. When we do something like that. And you're praising God. You're giving glory to God. Even before you see the, the thing actually happen in your life. God, thank you. It's, now, even in the natural, right? In, in our day to day life, we do that. And somebody says, Hey, uh, 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 somebody promises something. Hey, I will do this for you. You say, Thank you. Uh, they may not have done it yet, but you still say, Thank you, because they've given you their word. They say, I will do it for you. I will do this. You say, Thank you so much. And you're thanking them in advance. How much more with God? God has given us His words. So you can give glory to God in advance. Yes. So the fifth thing we see in Abraham's life was he was strengthened in faith, giving glory to him. So as he glorified God, as he praised God, he was strengthened. He did stronger and stronger. Okay. And finally, number six. We see that he came to a place where he was fully convinced that what God had promised, he will. He came to that place. He, he didn't start out like that. He had some doubts along the way, some questions along the way. But he came to this place, it says in Romans 4, 21, and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. That means he reached that place where God, I know it will happen. I know you will perform. No more doubts. No more questions. He was fully convinced that what God had promised he was also able to Yeah. So now, if you look at Abraham's journey of faith and, and Hebrews chapter 11, outlines some of this as well. Um, we see that Abraham obeyed God. So he's adding a few things that in Hebrews 11. Abraham obeyed in faith. So faith involves us acting in line with what God has called us to do. So Abraham obeyed. So faith is not passive. It's not, okay, I believe God, I'll sit and do nothing. No, we believe God to do something. Abraham obeyed. Right? He went out. God said, go, I'll, I'll give you a land. Your descendants will inherit. And so he started the journey. He started going on Roman. So the same thing with you and I. And we have faith in God, we're believing God for something. Do what you can to obey God. Follow God in his plan, in his purpose. To obey God. Abraham obeyed God. He, he went out to pray. He lived in the land that God said it's going to be yours for you and your children. Uh, Sarah also experienced through faith. She experienced, uh, you know, her body being made alive. And uh, 
Through faith, a man who had been given up by the dead gave rise to numerous descendants. What is really interesting here in Abraham's life, and we're going to the latter part of his life, of his journey of faith, is that he came to this place where he was so fully convinced about God that when God said, Abraham, take your son Isaac, Offer man a sacrifice. Abraham was willing to do it. And Hebrews 11 tells us he was he was convinced that even if he offered Isaac as a sacrifice, God would raise Isaac back to life. Because God said, Isaac is that descendant. In other words, Abraham. I come to this place of faith in God, very much completely, fully convinced that God will keep His word. So even when God said, "Take Isaac off," I'll do it. God will keep His word. He has to bring Isaac back to life. That's the place Abraham came to be. In his faith in God, and it could lead him to that place of complete events. Others would say, God, I waited 25 years for this promise. What are you saying? Me? You're going, oh, oh, no, God, I can't do it. No, he wanted like that. Yeah, he waited 25 years, but in that 25 years, he had come to a place where he just, I know God will keep his word, nothing will change it. Even if our prize is going sacrifice, God will raise him up. And so that's when he went to Mount Moriah, ready to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. And the Bible in, in James chapter 2, James chapter 2, verses 20 to 26. Once again, this is another passage that is talking about Abraham's faith. And I want to highlight a few things here in James chapter 2, verses 20 to 26. What we see here in James 2. 20 to 26, he's talking about corresponding actions. And I want to highlight verse 22. James 2, verse 22. James is saying, it's not only Abraham, Abraham's faith. says, do you see that faith working together with his works and by work Faith was made perfect. So James, of course, is emphasizing the importance of having works. That means you, you don't only have faith in your heart, but you're willing to do something in line with what you believe. That's works. And what James is saying is he's telling us the importance of works, of doing something. Says Abraham had faith, but his faith was working together with his works, and through works his faith was made perfect. That means his faith was brought to a place that it could produce. So, understand the importance of works. Works meaning actions of of, of doing something with your faith. When you start doing something, your actions bring your faith to a place where it can produce. The word mature means to come to fullness, the place where it can produce. So, Roman uh, James chapter 2, verse 22. Faith working together with his works, and by works, faith was made. By works, by his actions, his faith came to maturity, came to a place where it could produce. That's why we need to act up here. Start doing something, aligning to what you believe. So start acting like that. The other thing I want to point out from this passage is verse 23 Abraham. Believed God, 
It has accounted him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. He was called the friend of God. So, while Abraham was making his journey to receive the promise, it was not just about the promise. It was about his relationship with He became a friend of God. And it's, it's like this. He got to know God well. He got to know God. He got to become strong in his relationship with God. God himself was calling Abraham, my friend. In Genesis 18, and, uh, God is saying, like, you know, uh, he was going to, he was planning to destroy his father, but the Lord says, How can I hide from Abraham? What I'm going to do. And that's friendship with God. God is his love. I don't want to do something without telling Abraham. That's friendship with God. So Abraham, in his process of walking by faith, most importantly, came into this place of closeness, of friendship. And that's what we all are looking for, right? to, to be close to him, to be a friend of God. Yes, we are walking by faith in order to receive uh, his promise, in order to receive the fulfillment of the things he said in our eyes, and all of that is wonderful. But there is something beyond, something great, which is this place of friendship with God. So, to wrap this up, we can learn how Abraham walked by faith in God, the steps of Abraham's faith, which we must imitate, and we must apply it in our own lives. We'll come back to this and we, you know, give an outline of how to exercise faith in God. But I also want to point out that that journey or those steps of faith actually brought him into this place where he was fully convinced about God. And it brought him to this place of being a friend of God. So that's what we should be looking for. Yeah, we have to believe God will receive his promises in our lives uh, for various things that he's promised to do on the phone. But ultimately, our goal is to be a friend of God. To walk in that place close to our intimacy. Okay. Any questions before we go for our break? Let me uh, look in the chat, which I have not done yet. Um, any questions from those of you who are online? Um, any questions here? Yeah? Clear steps of Abraham's faith. Okay, let's go for a break and uh, we'll be back uh, for our next class. Thank you.